In this video, we're going to see how we can make a mesh dynamically through code. This is extremely useful in many scenarios, like for making a custom animation system, like the one I use in my videos, or making a heat map or a radar chart. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's first talk about how useful it is to be able to make dynamic meshes. Meshes are used to render everything, as you will soon see, and making meshes through code allows you to dynamically generate interesting shapes on the fly. We can modify the vertices and what part of the texture is rendered, which allows for very useful effects. One of the recent videos was covering a radar chart in the UI, and the shape for that radar is using a custom mesh. The environment heat map used in Battle Royale Tycoon along with the floor tiles are all based on dynamic meshes. Another example is simply the animation system that I use in my videos. Each unit is a single mesh that is dynamically composed of multiple quads that display certain parts of the texture. Also the persistent particle system that I use for blood particles is also mesh based. Each particle is a single quad that moves its vertices until it comes to a complete stop. So this is just a sample of all the awesome stuff you can create once you know how to create custom dynamic meshes. So in this video, we're going to learn how to create a mesh completely from scratch. We're going to see how something is rendered on screen. Then we're going to learn to create the mesh object in code, learn what size each of the mesh elements need to be, draw a triangle, then apply a texture to it, and finally draw another triangle in order to create a square. With that, you will know everything you need to know in order to make your own custom meshes to create your own specific awesome systems. And then in the end, I will expand upon the code to make some examples of custom meshes in action, like a floor tile and a animation system. Okay, so now that we've seen just how useful it is being able to make a mesh through code, let's talk about how something is actually rendered on screen. So here is my empty scene, there's nothing on it. Over here in the hierarchy, you can see that all I have is the UI and a simple camera. And the camera, as you can see, it is rendering completely in black. Now here I make a new game object, and again, still nothing is rendered. Now I add a mesh filter and a mesh renderer, and again, still nothing is visible. However, now I go in here and I set a mesh. Let's use the default quad. And now finally you can see something. Let's increase it. And now I drag a material onto it, and there you go, we can now view our texture. So these are the two core components that we need in order to render something on screen. We have a mesh and a mesh render. The mesh is what defines the shape that is rendered, and the material contains the texture data to be applied to that mesh. As you may know, computer graphics are made using polygons, so triangles. And over here I have chosen the default quad mesh, and in order to make a quad or a square, we need two polygons, or two triangles. And if we go in here on our scene, we can select. Here it is currently shaded, and we select wireframe instead. And you can see indeed that our quad is made up of two polygons. So here we have one, and down here we have another. So you put two of them together, and we have a nice square making a quad mesh. The sprite render works exactly in the same way. So if we go in here, create a new sprite. There it is, the sprite render, drag the sprite. And here you can see the sprite render does exactly the same thing. Also has a quad with two polygons. Alright, so now that we've seen how something is rendered on screen, let's see how we can dynamically create a mesh through code. So let's make a script to test our code. So in here, make a new c -sharp script, let's call it our testing. Let's make a new game object, call it testing, and drag the script onto it. Okay. Now here in our script, let's first just go into our private void start and do a simple debug.log just to make sure that our script is running. Okay, let's see the console, and we have our console saying test. Okay, great. So our script is running correctly. Now in here, let's start by creating a mesh. So it's going to be an object of type mesh. Let's call it mesh, and we just do new mesh. All right, there's our mesh object. However, like this, all we've done is create a mesh in memory. It doesn't really exist in our scene. In order to show our mesh, like we saw, one of the things we need is a mesh filter. So here in our testing object, let's add a mesh filter. And now we can go back into our code, and here we get the component of type mesh filter, and we set the mesh to be our newly created mesh. Okay, now let's test. Okay, here we are, and still nothing is visible. However, if we inspect in here on our mesh filter, we can see that there's something in there. And if we double click, 
We can now inspect the mesh and we can see that it has zero vertices and zero triangles. So the mesh has no data, but we did manage to create and assign it. Okay, so far so good. All right, now let's set up the vertices and triangles. Over here, back in our code, when we create the mesh, there are three fields that we need to set. We need to set the vertices, which is an array of vector threes. Vertices represent each vertex of our mesh. Then we also need to set the UV. This is an array of vector twos, which define the part of the texture that matches with a certain vertex. And finally, we need to set the triangles, which is an array of ints, which define the vertex index, and three of them make up a polygon. Okay, so let's set them all up. First, let's make some local arrays. We're going to set them up, and only in the end do we assign it to our mesh. So we need an array of vector threes for our vertices. Then we need an array of vector twos for our UV. And finally, we need an array of ints for our triangles. All right, so we do it, we set them all up, and finally, we upload them to the mesh. All right, so far, so good. Now, as you can see, we need to define a size for our arrays. So let's start off with the simplest thing we can render, which is a single polygon. In order to create a triangle polygon, we need three points. So in here, we're going to have three vertices. Then the UV is always the same size as the vertices, so we also have three. And finally, the triangles contains the indexes of each vertex that makes up a triangle. And a triangle is made up of three points, so in here, again, we're also going to have three. All right, so just like this, let's test and inspect our mesh. Okay, so here we are, we still can't see anything, but let's inspect our mesh. And there it is, our mesh now has some data. It has three vertices, it has UV, and one triangle, one polygon triangle. All right, great. Back in the code. In here, let's define our vertices. So we're going to have three vertices. For vertex zero, let's put it on new vector three on zero, zero. Then for the one, let's put it right above, so on zero, 100. And finally, for the third vertex, let's put it up and to the right. So we're going to set it to 100, 100. All right, these are our three vertices. Now for the UV, let's ignore it for now. And finally, for the triangles, this is an array of ints which contains the index of the vertices that make up a polygon. So let's start our triangle on vertex 0. Then we connect vertex 0 into the vertex on index 1. And finally we connect it into the index 2. And that's it! Now one thing that is very important in here is the order of the indexes. Each polygon has a face and a back face, and some shaders will call the back face. What defines the front and back of the polygon is the order of the indexes. In order to see the front face, always set the indexes in a clockwise order. So here you can see that our triangle is going from the origin, then going up, and then up and to the right. If we swapped it and did up to the right to the up to the down, then we would have set our triangle counterclockwise, which would swap the front and back. So always keep that in mind, and in most cases, just set it to clockwise. All right, so now that we've set everything up, let's test. Okay, here we are, and we still can't see anything. Let's inspect the mesh, and there you go, everything is correct. Three vertices, triangles, and the UV. And the reason we can't see anything is like we've seen previously, we need a mesh filter for the mesh, and then we need a mesh render. And yep, we can finally see our nice polygon. Awesome! If we inspect the scene, and again put it on wireframe, we can see our nice polygon connecting, there's a vertice here, one here, one here, and the triangle connecting all of them. Now, our polygon is currently not displaying a texture because we did not set the UV. So let's do that. So we're going to set up the UV array. Now in here, the UV array always has the same size as the vertex array. So we have three vertices and three UVs. Each UV index contains a texture position that should be matched to the vertex in that exact same index. Over here on the project files, I have this texture. As you can see, it has a bunch of different colors, so we can easily see what part of our texture is being shown. Now we want to apply this texture to our polygon. In here, the UVs are vector twos, and they are normalized vector twos. That means that the lower left corner of the texture is on point zero zero, and the upper right point is on one one. So we created our polygon with three vertices, one on the bottom, then one above, and one to the right. 
So in order to display this texture, just like the polygon shape, we're going to set the vertex on index 0 into 0, 0, so that it displays the lower left corner. Then on the index 1, we want to show the upper left part of the texture. So we're going to keep the x at 0 and the y at 1. And finally on the 2, we want to show the upper right. So we set it into 1, 1. All right, that should do it. We assigned our vertices, our UVs, and our triangles. So our mesh has complete information. Let's test. So here we are, and we still see the same pink texture. The reason is because we need to assign our material. So down here we have our texture. Let's make a material to apply to it. So a new material, call it the same thing. And here, in this case, let's use a very simple shader. So just unlit texture, and we drag our rainbow texture, OK. Now back in our testing object, we just drag the material. And there it is. And as you can see, the texture perfectly matches with the corners we selected. So down here, the light blue, exactly matching that one. Then up here, the green, yep, and the red, yep. And the rest of the texture is not visible since we did not set the UV to use it. Awesome. So a triangle is a great shape, but a lot of the times a square shape is more helpful. So let's see how we can expand our mesh in order to make a quad. Now here in our code, we set up our triangle, which has three vertices, three UVs, and three triangles. Now, in order to make a quad, essentially what we need is just another triangle. We put two triangles together and we have a nice square. So let's think about what we need. In order to make a square, we need four points. So in here, we need four vertices. Then UVs are the exact same number as the vertices. So again, also four. And now for the triangles. Over here, we have three triangle indexes per each polygon. Now, in order to make our square, we need two polygons. So that means we need to have three times two triangles, which is six. And that's it. That's the size of our rays. Now here we are setting up our values. So you have 0, 0, 0, 100, 100, 0. And in order to make a quad, what we need is the one that is right and down. So let's set the vertice on index 3 to be on 100 and 0. Now on the UV, let's show the entire texture. So for the UV3, Let's put it on 1, 0. And now in here for the triangles, the first polygon stays the same, so we'll leave the first three indexes. And now for the next three, again, remember to set them clockwise. So for the second polygon, we're going to go from vertex 0, then go into vertex 2, which is up and to the right, and finally go into vertex 3, which is to the right and down. And that's it. We have our quad nicely set up. So we have four vertices, four UVs, and six triangles. All right, let's test. And yep, there it is. We have our quad being displayed as a perfect square showing the entirety of our texture. So we have essentially recreated the underlying code for the sprite render. If we inspect our scene, we can see that indeed we have our two polygons. So we can see shaded wireframe and see exactly like that. We have two triangles connected in order to make a nice quad. So now you know how to create a mesh and set up the vertices, UVs, and triangles to take any shape you want. Every other effect you want to make is just an expansion of this code by adding more vertices and different triangles. For example, let's make some tiles. Alright, so here's the code to make some tiles. Now I plan on doing a dedicated video on how to make a grid map and visualize it, but for now I just wanted to quickly demonstrate the various uses for the dynamic mesh. So in here you can see that I have a certain width and certain height, let's put this bigger, let's put it 4x4, four four, and a certain tile size. Then the vertices, I calculate them by 4, since again we have 4 per quad, so 4 vertices, 4 and 6. Multiply them by the total size of the grid. Then I cycle through the width, cycle through the height, and set the quad data for that specific quad. So do all of this, and then the result. And here it is, we have our result, our nice tile grid. So again, the way that it works, essentially each of these is a nice quad. So we can go back into the scene, and here inspect, and you can see that each of them is indeed one quad. So this is just an expansion of what we were doing previously. So instead of having this texture, you would add a floor tile texture, and you can see how you could have a nice floor tile system, just like the one that is used in Battle Royale Tycoon. 
Now for another example, let's make a simple animation. Alright, so here is a small animation that functions exactly like the custom animation system that I use in my videos. So as you can see, the head is bouncing up and down, there's a body behind it. And if we go and inspect, again, our wireframe, there it is, you can see the quad for the body and the quad for the head. So put it on shaded, and yep, there you go. You can easily see two quads and one of them is moving. And down here I have the texture, and as you can see, it is a simple sprite sheet texture with the various body parts cleanly separated. Now here in the code, as you can see, it is all based on quads. So we have two quads, then we have a quad to render our body, exactly the same way that we created our previous quads, and another one for the head. One of the main differences is over here on the UV. Again, the UV is a normalized value, so we need to take the texture width and height in pixels, take the position in pixels, and then we simply divide them in order to get our normalized values. So we do that in order to just show the body texture on this first quad and down here we show just the head texture and then down here i'm using the code monkey utilities to create the function on update so this code runs on every update and it's just a simple moving up and down code so as you can see i just take the head position i move the y up and down then i modify the vertices array based on the new head position and i upload them back into the mesh Remember that in order to modify a mesh, first you need to modify a local array, and in the end, you need to apply it to the mesh. So we do all of that, and again, here is our nice result. We have our simple character with two quads, one of them moving up and down by modifying the vertices. And again, you can see that it is all running on a single game object on a single mesh. So this is the core for my animation system. You just add more body parts, store the keyframes positions in a file, and have it all working. So, now you know everything you need to know about making custom meshes. Now go ahead and make some cool stuff yourself. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time!